guys welcome back to my channel I am gonna go over my July wrap up and I'm gonna go into the books that we don't really need to discuss because we know them very well I'm I read Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban I give this five stars and the next one I read was Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire I give this also five stars I'm doing a slight reread of the Harry Potter series so you may see a couple more of these in my other wrap up or in a vlog or whatever so that's why you're seeing multiple Harry Potter books here and I read Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn if you watched my Reading Rush wrap up you will know why I don't want to discuss this further if you know you know don't need to go over it. Toss it aside. And another book I read was Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I read this also for the reading rush and this basically goes in to Victor Frankenstein and how he creates this um, being made, made out of different body parts that he collected and put together and brought to life. And when, he, when the creature wakes up he's like Oh, what have I done? And then he abandons him. And then it goes into the creature's perspective on how, on how he kind of, he's he was alone. How he watched other people and how they interacted, and he really, he really learned from them. But then each person interaction he got, he got rejected left and right, and he ends up becoming resentful because of this. Because he's like, well, why am I living when I keep being rejected left and right because he, he's, he's really alone because no one wants to be with him and really get to know who he is because he is a good person at heart but because of him being rejected left and right and being because of that he becomes resentful and then he ends up finding Victor Frankenstein and like and is like hey can you make me another companion because if I have another companion I'll be happy and I won't be so resentful of other people and won't want to kill other people so so Frankenstein tries to go in to do this but then Frankenstein is like at the last minute like oh I don't want to do this because what if they what if they both like breed and they have like a full race of of these creatures and they take over the world we won't want that so he ends up not doing it and the, the creature is like oh you're not going to do that for me so what I'm going to do is kill every person that's very close to you and that's what he ends up doing and then it ends by both of them dying and what I really, really like this part, what, what I really liked about this book is that it has some journal entries in the beginning and then it goes into Frankenstein's retelling of the of the story and he also goes into the monster's retelling of his story and what he went through when he was abandoned and how what he feels and all that stuff. And I, that's what I really liked about this book so that's why I give this 4 out of 5 stars. I think the reason why I didn't get the full 5 is because it is... It was written in 1818, so like the language I didn't quite get, so that's why I didn't get a full five stars for me. And then I read Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn, and this I gave a full five stars. This was my first thriller slash mystery crime read that I had that I ever read. So um, this is about Nikki, um, Nick, and Amy Dunn. A married couple who have been married for five years and they go through a lot of trials and tribulations through their marriage and they end up losing both their jobs so they go through financial issues and uh, there's infidelity that happens and then the wife ends up missing on their five-year anniversary but it's it is made up to where it looks like well it looks like where Nick has killed her so we actually find out what really happened and if Nick really killed her or not and it takes a very unexpected turn like towards the middle part and it surprised me if you know what I mean you know what I mean I don't know if it was supposed to surprise me but it did so but then from there you basically go basically go off off left from there because it just gets crazier and crazier and you're just like wait how can this get any more interesting than what it already has and it it was great it was a great read for me i thoroughly enjoyed it it kept my attention i was enthralled through the whole entire thing so that's why this got a five stars for me 
And the next book I read was at the beginning month was Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare. This, I believe, let me check. I give this four stars and this is, this goes in, you follow uh, Teresa Gray. She ends up going to London to, to be with her brother because her, their aunt just died. But she's getting kidnapped in the process and then she ends up being thrusted into the Shadowhunter world. Not knowing what it is, what to do and all that stuff because her brother's kidnapped. So she's trying to find her brother. We're trying to save him because she can't find him. So he's in this, he basically, drama ensues in this. It's a whole bunch of drama and tea in it. So... Um, you end up finding out a whole bunch more about her brother and where he, where he got in the situation he's at and more about the Shadow Hunters and more about what, what, who Teresa Gray is and what she is. So you end up following her through that whole entire journey through that and this, I, this, um, I enjoy, I, I enjoy this perfectly. Obviously I feel like maybe I have some sentimental value sentimental attachments to the mortal instruments. I enjoy those because maybe I enjoy those a little bit more. I'm biased. I know I enjoy those a little bit more because because for some reason they were just fun. They were just fun to read but this one it was a little bit. Maybe it's because it was just like the intro and all the good parts are going to be in the second and third one. This is really you're just getting to know like the atmosphere and the characters in there. It was really big. It was just setting you up for like the second and third book so I get it. So maybe that's why I didn't give the full five stars. But I did enjoy this, so I was perfectly happy with it. And I read um, three short stories in um, The Brothers Grimm Fairy Tale. Oh, I'm trying to get that without my light. Let me turn that off for a moment. I probably can't turn off my light so, while well, I'm recording, so, well, we're doing it. So, see if you can see that. It's a little shiny, but it's blue. It's pretty. It's like one of those, um, whatever editions. This is the Epic Editions. The classic stories, whatever the whatever these are called. Hang on, we're gonna we're gonna get this, okay? I wanna say it's like the epic editions. I don't know. Well, whatever editions it is, it's cool. I read um, I read Frog King or Iron Henry, and Cat and Mouse in Partnership, and Our Lady's Child. And I won't really review these because I want to get more through this so I can go through each short story and talk about them what was my favorite which one wasn't so I do a separate video for these so this is based I read this also during my reading rush because they were short and they fit the prompt because I ended up switching my TV at the last minute because I wasn't filling the book I wanted to read at the time so that is that and basically let's see if I can do this all right these are all the books I read for August. Take a little thumbnail right here. Mm -hmm. Anyway guys, that is it for my July wrap up. I don't think I missed anything, but I will go into my stats before I leave. I read a total of 10 books, including like my little short stories I read, and a total of 2,780 eight pages I read this month average rating was 4.6 stars longest book I read was Harry Potter coming in at 734 pages and the shortest book I read was Frog King or Iron Henry Cat Mouse of Partnership and Our Lady's Child which they were each two pages each so I hope you guys enjoyed this little wrap up and I hope you guys are having a great day evening morning or wherever you guys are at in the world and I hope to see you guys next time on my next video. So, bye.